here at the Muleshoe National Wildlife Refuge here south of town and that is right off of 214 and we're near Goose Lake and we're talking with who? Christina Stevens, president of the Friends in Muleshoe Garula National Wildlife Refuges. And uh, it's a windy day out here, but we just want you to see the beautiful terrain here uh, with the goose lake behind us before we go inside. Yes, this is a very unique landscape for this part of Texas. It certainly is. It's as uh, good as uh, the Grand Canyon or Palador Canyon. <laughs> uh, no, but for this part of Texas, when you think of the part, te this part of Texas or this region of Texas, a lot of people would assume flat cotton fields, uh, sorghum fields, just flat areas. But this actually has mesas and actual really cool landscape. So this is a very unique area for this part of Texas. It is extremely unique. Now, where do you live? Uh, I actually live in Sundown. Now we're going to go to the Milshu uh, National Wildlife Refuge headquarters here just south of town. Now we're inside of the headquarters of the Milshu National Wildlife Refuge. And Christina, how did you get interested in becoming a friend of this refuge and the Grula? What happened was I probably about in 2013, um, I contacted Jude. And, and Jude is the manager here. Yes, Jude Smith is the, the refuge manager. And what he, I had said, I'm here. I'm not that far away from the refuge. How far is Sunday? from here? Uh, probably about 40 or 50 miles uh -huh. Some, somewhere along in there. But anyway, I had sent him my resume, and I said, if there's anything that I can do for you, uh, let me know. Well, I never heard from him for about a month. It was about a month later. And one of the, the my strongest uh, part of my background is creating nonprofit organizations. And he said that's what he needed, was a nonprofit friends group started for his two main refuges at the moment, or at that time, which was Milshu and Garula. And so I started that process. I got the organization started in Texas, and then we got the official nonprofit status in August of 2014 for the Friends Group. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the purpose of the uh, group? The purpose is basically trying to help the refuges itself achieve their own mission and enhance the educational opportunities out here, not only for the regional schools, but also for adults. Because there is very valuable resources out here and from cultural to uh, natural resources that can be and should be taught to both uh, to local kids, colleges, universities, uh, as well as giving adults learning and educational opportunities. Of course, this was the very first National Wildlife Refuge ever established in the state of Texas. So it's been here a long, long time. And uh, how many years would that be? It's actually 80 years this this month. Um, it was done in, established in 1935. Uh -huh. And so uh, tell me, uh, if you wanted to become a friend, a member of the Friends of the N Milshoe and Grula National Wildlife Refuge, what would you do? Um, right now we do have a uh, Facebook page for the friends group and you can actually there is a join button on that Facebook page that you can join the friends group there are various levels but right now what I'm trying to do to help build up the membership to increase the awareness of the organization from now until the end of December 
we're going to offer uh, half price half priced memberships, which so is what is that? Fifteen dollars, and that would go until like if you join November first then your membership would go all the way till November 1st of next year. And one of the other things that uh, I think that we are, that I think is really cool that we're going to offer, if you're a veteran, you automatically get, if you have an interest, uh, you automatically get a free membership because that's our way of saying, thank you for your service and we want your participation and your support now you know there might be someone who is not or has no access to the internet who really would like to become a member what do they do um we you would actually just send a check to the mule shoe the friends of the mule shoe and gorilla national wildlife refuges to the main p.o box for uh the refuge, the Mule Shoe. Refuge. What is that? Uh, it's P.O. Box 549, Mule Shoe, Texas. And of course, that zip code is 79347. And anyone, anywhere can be a member. You don't have to live in this immediate area. That is so true. That is a very good point that you brought up. Uh, because this, uh, we are representing both the Mule Shoe and the Garula, which Garula is part of uh, New Mexico or just right across the border of New Mexico state line. Yeah, you know, I think most people know about the Muleshoe National Wildlife Refuge, but tell us about Grula. It, it's really different. Grula is really different. Uh, Gorilla gives you the experience of saying, okay, I've got one foot in New Mexico and I've got one foot in Texas. Uh, the habitat is very unique over there uh, because it is a saline lake that is uh, filled with rainwater. And there, and it was originally established for sandhill crane protection mm-hmm. uh, back in 1969. And so far, uh, when there's rain over there, yes, the cranes do utilize it. Right now, it it's um, it is more sand dunes than anything over there because you have constant blowing sand over there. We we have plenty of wind in eastern New Mexico and uh, West Texas as well. So uh, uh, these are sandhill cranes right behind us. And, um, of course, this is the season that the Sandhill Crane comes in to our area and especially to the lakes here on the Muleshoe National Wildlife Refuge. Now, tell me how many lakes there are here. Uh, There are three lakes. There is Paul's Lake, Goose Lake, and then White Lake. And of course, uh, from 214, 20 miles south of Milshoe, you can see the sign that will take you right to the Paul's Lake, and it does have an observation deck there. Uh, yes, it does. And then, uh, uh, how do you get to the Goose Lake? Uh, Goose Lake, you actually would turn off uh, 214 onto the main part of the refuge. And Goose Lake is actually the first lake that will be onto your right when you come into the refuge. And then you'll drive down a little ways. And then White Lake will be the two different lakes that are, well, actually, they're two, they're the same lake, but it's two different lakes divided by a dam uh, that'll be on your left. And uh, don't you think that they have, all three of them have a little bit more water this time of the year than they have in many years past? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. So are you anticipating that there will be a lot more Sandhill Crane coming in? We can only, I guess, hope and pray that there will be. I mean, already we hear cranes outside, which is fantastic because... This is only October 13th, and cranes are already here in this part of Texas. And, you know, um, you can hear them, and it's just a musical sound, I think. And uh, when you actually see them flying in, uh, 
they come in uh, usually at dusk. What's a good time to see them coming in usually? Uh, probably right at dusk, probably about five all the way till sunset. And then also when they leave in the morning, uh, what, what sunrise uh, for? About sunrise along in there somewhere. I mean, I've only ever, I, to be honest with you, I've only ever seen them come in in the evenings. I've never been out here early in the morning uh-huh. to watch them fly off. I have to tell you, it is a very spiritual to me um, experience to see the Sand Hill Cranes in hundreds flock in or leave either one. And, um, you know, what is so disheartening and really, really uh, surprising, there's so many people who have lived 70 and 80 years in Milshew and have never come just 20 miles south to see this experience. And that is a very good point you brought up, because even some of the people that I've talked to, like in the Lubbock area, they're like, we've got a refuge in this part of Texas. Yes, you've got the you've got the the original first one that started. And it amazes me the people that even are uh, older, like in their 60s or 70s that have lived in this area for maybe 30 or 40 or 50 years, they don't know this place exists. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hoping that that is one of the the missions that we can help with, with this friends group, is helping bring that awareness that this unique place is here for all to see and enjoy, not just a select few that probably know about it. Because unless you do come out here, you're not going to to see the sandhill cranes or you're not going to catch maybe a, a great horned owl or the barn owls flying or the occasional badger or coyote or the deer the deer or the prairie dogs that are here um and this is just this is just a very this is a very unique, special place that everyone needs to enjoy. It really is. And there's no charge. It's free. You you come in to the refuge, Grula and Milshew, and uh, there's no gate fee. You just come right in. Yes, that's true. Also, there is a, a, a campground where I think it's just a wonderful place to bring a Boy Scout troop, a Cub Scout troop, a Girl Scout troop, the Daisies, or a Sunday school class, uh, any age of would enjoy uh, just going and uh, maybe uh, having a wiener roast there and uh, doing some hiking. And that's true. You, there are several hiking trails out here that uh, that can be enjoyed. There certainly is. Now, uh, tell us, uh, besides what you have mentioned, what other animals can you think of that uh, might be spotted? What did you spot just recently? Um, I actually got to uh, spot and actually see what is called a hoary bat. And uh, I was out here with my friend, uh, Willa Finley, and we were checking out the boat art tree because we were actually out here trying to see what we could do uh, for a seed gathering workshop next year and plan for one. And she's standing underneath the boat art tree, and then finally she goes, Christina, what's this furry thing up here in the tree? And I thought, what in the world could she be looking at? And I went over there and I st- I looked right up at the spot where she was at. And um, as soon as I saw it, I went bonko because I've only seen hoary bats in uh, mist nets when I've actually helped do uh, catching bats. And so when I saw that, I was like, <gasps> Yeah, I said a few choice words, unfortunately, but they were like, it was happy excitement because it was like, oh my gosh, 
because that was just a rarity to see that little guy just sitting, you know, just hanging out on that boat art tree about eleven. It was in the morning. It was in the morning. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, we've had one in our, not a bow dark, but a bat in our house uh, years ago, and um, m- m- we let it go. I'm <laughs> good for you. <laughs> uh, it was sort of scary, though. <laughs> yeah, but see, that's the wonderful thing. Bats are not scary, and I mean, really, all wildlife is not scary. You just have to be taught to appreciate it. Now, uh, if a class wanted to come here, like uh, from school or from a college or university, uh, h- how did they arrange? Or if you want to come out and camp, are there camping facilities actually here? Um, there is some camping facilities down at the campground. And normally, while those are free, it would be suggested that you do call the headquarters to let uh, the personnel know that, yes, I am coming. Uh, Because while that there is no charge, it just would be nice to let them know that somebody is actually there. And the same kind of goes with the uh, school groups using it. Even though we're in the process, one of our main missions is the education part of it for uh, uh, the friends group, still going back through and and talking uh, to the refuge headquarters and then trying to coordinate maybe with the friends group would be extremely helpful for both entities. Now, do you have a telephone number for the Milshoe National Wildlife Refuge headquarters? 806 Nine four six three three four one, and of course uh, the secretary here at the wildlife refuge is Glenda Copley of Milshu. Uh, she's been here for twenty eight years, and she can help you immensely uh, in any way uh, possible. And so now, uh, is there something else that you need from the public uh, in regards to the friends organization? Basically, what I would like to see is to bring more awareness that the Friends Group is actually here. There may be someone that is listening to this interview um, that has maybe already had a really long, strong love for this place. And maybe they would be willing to serve uh, in a board capacity, whether it's an executive board position or an advisory board position. Uh, because right now we are wanting to strengthen both of those boards to help continue to get this organization uh, off the ground more and to help it continue to grow. Now, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about the Milshu National Wildlife Refuge or the Grula? See, when you put me on the spot like that, I have no clue. Um uh, Honestly, you stop it. we want to thank you so much, Christina Stevens of Sundown, right? Yes. And uh, she is the president of the Milshu and Grula Friends of the Milshu Grula National <laughs> Wildlife Refuge. And uh, be sure if you're interested in any way to go on to, is it called Friends of? On the Facebook? Yes, Friends, Friends of, of and Grula uh, National Wildlife Refuge page. And you can even join the Friends that way or call the Wildlife Refuge here for more information. And I know that they would appreciate your interest. But you will be really blessed if you come and enjoy the sights and the sounds of the refuge. Thank you. Thank you.